Nope. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the seventh annual Defeat Depression Walk. My name is Wees Abnau, and I am the executive director of Edison House and Community Services. I am very pleased to see so many of you on this beautiful morning, helping us to raise funds and to create awareness, knowledge, and acceptance of mental illness in the communities of Harrison Hot Springs and the district of Kent. We are very honored that we are on First Nations land. And um, we would like to acknowledge that, that we are on a traditional, unceded territory of the Stahelis Nation. We would like to thank the Stahelis people for this. And we are all uh, most honored to uh, welcome Boyd Peters and his representatives uh, on behalf of the chief, Ralph Leon, and council. And uh, may I ask you, Boyd, to start with your ceremony? Thank you, Grace. Hayat et tosqui, tritiquas de elis, e tosqualva, quals patslalo. My heart is filled with um, goodness uh, and gratitude to see all of you here for this very special occasion. Uh, I introduced myself as Hayat, which is my traditional name. It comes from my great grandfather on my dad's side. Um, my given name is Boyd Peters, and I'm a band counselor for Stahelis, and I'm also the director for Rights and Title. Um, our chief, Ralph Leon, couldn't be here today. Uh, I think he has an extended hunting trip that he's still enjoying, I think. <clears throat> it's a real honor, you know, to be able to do this traditional welcome for such an occasion. Um, the the de Defeat Depression Walk, an annual event, um, I know that a lot of our people suffer from depression, and rightfully so. We suffer from grief and loss because our land, our culture, our teachings, our spiritual ceremonies were taken away from us. And we're, a lot of us were put into residential schools, Indian day schools. And we're suffering the legacy of that. And with reconciliation, which is the buzzword now in government, we really need to work towards um, working alongside of our partners, working alongside organizations such as the Defeat Depression Walk, walk side by side to ensure that the health and well-being of our communities are taken care of. I know that our people have done a lot of work towards that healing and there's a lot more work to be done. I really appreciate the opportunity to do a traditional welcome because our traditional welcomes to us mean that, that we're here to welcome the people to this sacred land of ours, this ancient village of ours is Kwa'il's. The Qualls is the, is the actual hot springs, means boiling water and is healing to us in the villages, Qua'ils. When I say that we work together, we signed the MOU on cooperation and communication with the village of Harrison Hot Springs here, uh, District of Kent, Chiam, Seaberg, Stala Tribal Council, and Scowlitz to work on common interests. And the thing that we all have in common is the social issues, the alcohol and drugs, the depression, the suicide. I had some news released to me just last week that one of um, our provincial colleagues who helped to put together um, the Klatz Wildlife Management Area. Klatz is the, the 
flat, productive area at the confluence of the Harrison and the Trahills rivers. And as a protection of our rivers, our ecosystems, our wildlife, our birds, our fish. And he committed suicide and his wife didn't even know, didn't see it coming. Nobody saw it coming. And we can't go through these kind of things in silence. We need to reach out to the resources. We need to reach out to the people that can help us. We need to be open. Our people are gradually getting there now. We're no longer suffering in silence. We're doing things that we need to do to be able to heal ourselves. And we have the resources to be able to do it. And we do that through our culture and our spirituality. And I'd like to call forward our Tomo staff and uh, my brother, Cyril, Inia, Sarah, Simran. I'd like to call forward our Saskats to come join us. We're gonna, we're gonna do a welcome song. And uh, the song is, Welcome to Our Sacred Land. <laughs> our sacred land is very special to us and we need to take care of it just like we need to take care of ourselves. We say that, you know, we don't own the land but we are the land and we take care of the land just as we do ourselves. We take care of that spirit, we take care of that soul, we take care of the physical side and we do it holistically. So this song is Welcome to our, our sacred land.
Before I introduce our special guest, I would like first to invite Tim, Tim Chapman. Tim is our Substance Use Counselor with Agassi Harrison Community Services and he would like to, to tell something about depression. Tim, please come on. No, it's not, not one of the special guests, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, she's introduced me already, but uh, I think it's important to talk a little bit about what we're talking about when we talk about depression here. Um, I'll throw a couple statistics at you. It's becoming such a problem in our society right now that in Canada, they're saying that at least one in ten, that's a whole bunch of you in this room, will suffer a major depressive disorder at some point in your life. And when they say major depressive disorder, what they're talking about is entering into thoughts of suicide and that sort of thing. That's the sort of thing you guys are talking about. And, uh, um, it's now passing, depression is now passing smoking, obesity, and heart disease for people calling in sick. It's costing financially, just the financial cost, let alone the sadness and the way it affects other families and stuff, is, uh, is, is passing that now. So when people, if you're working and somebody phones in sick, and they say, yeah, yeah, I got this, uh, got this cold, I think. I think I'm going to be coming in today. Half the time, it is not a physical illness. It's a mental illness. You can, you can count on that. And that's, uh, and that's the problem is that the stigma attached to it. The people don't want to phone in and say, I can't get out of bed. I, can't seem to, I just can't seem to get out of bed today. I'm going to go see my doctor. Can't do that. We have to lie our way out of it. Um, there's a difference between, there's a, a real big difference between clinical depression and situational depression. Situational depression, you can often identify why you're depressed. It's something that has happened, you can see, uh, you know, your girlfriend breaks up with you, your boyfriend breaks up with you, that sort of thing. It's a situation that obviously you're going to be very sad, it's normal, you cry, go out with your friends, maybe get drunk too many times, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, but what we're talking about is Clinical depression. Uh, Anthony Bourdain is a really good example. Does anybody know, heard of Anthony Bourdain? Committed suicide. Had everything a person could possibly want in life. Everything. He had fame, fortune, a beautiful wife, talent. Committed suicide. That is not situational depression. That is an example of, of uh, clinical depression, that the chemicals in his brain were imbalanced. Now, take my story as an example of that, is that when I was a kid, I used to look around me and wonder why everybody looked so happy. And I was so sad all the time. I was a miserable kid. Never, nothing could make me happy. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I thought there was something desperately wrong with me. And what happened was that with that depression over the years, when I was about 14 years old, what I didn't realize what was happening was that what they're saying now is that people are actually born this way oftentimes, that our dopamine receptors in our brain, our brains are not capable of producing enough dopamine to fill them. So people like me as kids, those depressed little kids you see walking around, oftentimes their brain is incapable of filling the OP receptors. Now what happened to me was, when I was about 14, out drinking with a bunch of buddies, say I have a headache, someone passes me a couple of Tylenol 3s. You guys all have all heard of Tylenol 3s. At your age, you probably have. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's an opiate in there, it's codeine. So what happened was, when I was 14, I'm 60 today, and I remember it like it was yesterday. My opiate receptors were filled for the very first time in my life. And I remember saying to myself, oh, this is what it feels like. And of course, 20 years of heroin addiction later, I go and see a psychiatrist and a doctor, and they say, you have a depressive disorder. Your brain chemistry's off. Went on some good uh, talk therapy, took some good uh, medication, followed the doctor's orders, and I've been 22 years clean. This Yes, I attempted suicide. 
simply because I had a medical problem that nobody would address or I was too ashamed to address. This is why we do this walk, is so that we can bring awareness to the reality of this. And the people that are not here in this room today, the ones that probably are suffering this type of depression in your lives, and with this many people in the room, there's probably a few people in your lives that you're looking at right now thinking, this is happening now, this is going on. Please go see them. If you have any influence at all, get them to a doctor. They may not want to because of the depression for obvious reasons, but get them to a doctor because suicide is the next level. And by then it's too late. You had no idea, did you? No one has, a, no one has an idea. So this is the depth of the problem we're talking about. So I want to thank you all for coming out and raising money for the awareness. All the money that is funded that comes to us, 25% goes to the national uh, agency. 75% of the money that you're giving us stays in the community to help people so they will not commit suicide. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. to our special guest, Jaxi Sidhu, Member of Parliament and uh, representing the district of Mission Metzkri and the Fraser Canyon and if you would like to say a few words. Good morning, Agassi. Good morning. What a beautiful day you chose for a walk. And I'm also the elected thank the organizers, uh, Agassiz and Harrison, uh, Community Services, and the volunteers actually to put this together today. I also like to acknowledge the unceded territory of the Sahela Nation. And thank you, Chief, for doing this. The worship, Amalai Lori Thronis, other dignitaries, thank you for the invitation again. This is a very important uh, action task, uh, the previous speaker actually mentioned it, it's not, uh, you, you have a control over it. If you're born with this, please talk to your nearest and dears. One thing in my life actually I was able to understand if there's a problem in life, talk to your friends, talk to your relatives, talk to your family. Actually the problem becomes half because you have shared the burden with your dears and dears. Uh, first thing, actually, when I got elected, we had five orientations in Ottawa. Every five orientations, there was a there was a talk about keeping your life balanced. Unfortunately, we lost a couple member parliaments. Uh, they couldn't handle the job. They couldn't handle the pressure. And they both passed away in their offices. Uh, one was last year uh, and one year before that. So one needs to find a balance in life, actually, how to deal with the issue. Thank God we live in the best country in the world. I just came back from the, from the Arctic study, actually, uh, Canadian sovereignty is a bit of a, a question in uh, Northwest Territories and uh, uh, Inuit, six months, people don't have a daylight. You tell me the depression, there. I mean, we live in the best part of the world here. It doesn't give us a reason. We have help. First time ever in the history of our country, we, federal government, was able to negotiate an envelope when we fund money for Medicare into provinces. BC has $700 million set aside just to be used on the mental health issues. It was never there before. It can't be used in a general pool, so that money is here with British Columbia. A few pennies actually, $700 million. So I'm glad to work with the government uh, who understand the need of our citizens. But at the end, uh, I would say it's all about keeping a balance and keep your chin up. Uh, if we have a problem, let's share and then try to work with the, with the problem and 
don't, uh, it, it's, it's not a stigma, it's not a shame. Uh, it, 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 it's a health issue. And I, I'm not shy to talk about uh, this to, to get better. Uh, so thank you again for the invitation and have a great day. And have a great walk. We have also in our midst Laurie Thrones, MLA representing Chile and Kent, and I yes. <laughs> Good morning everyone and welcome to Harrison Hot Springs and the traditional territory of the Sahelis First Nation. Uh, so I believe it was seven years ago when I first attended uh, one of these walks and it was organised by um, Andrew McRae and now it's become such a main event every year. It's something that, I don't know, I never thought much about. You know, and when I see the people and just recently one of our residents, that this happened to him, and an unfortunate tragedy for the family. I just couldn't believe it. I'd seen the man two days before with his fiance, happy with his dog and everything else. And when it happened, I was called on the weekend, I was just totally dumbfounded. And it's a great honor today that I'm representing with the family, Team Frankie, and it's a great honor. Nice to know to hear from our federal representative that there's money set aside uh, to deal with these with these problems. Um, like uh, our gentleman said from the community services, you know we might be blinded to this. So if we hear about it, I mean, put yourselves out, get together and try and help somebody. Or if you can't help them, just go to an agency who can help them. I, I say it's something that. I think it was just swept aside for years and now it's come to a head and I think it's awful, it's just terrible that the families who have to suffer through it and the individuals who have to suffer through this, like Boyd said about our First Nations as well, it's, it's beyond me, but the, the great country that we live in and such a small population that these things are actually happening but they're there like a lot of other things. And I pray to God and I pray for all of you that uh, you'll keep up this walk every year. And if there's anybody out there that is suffering with this or the families, God bless you all and please seek help. Enjoy your walk and thank you for being here. volunteers and participants that allow defeat depression events event to be such a great success. In previous years this event has been organized by Andrea McCray and I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank Andrea for all her hard work and dedication to this campaign. Andrea.
walk for a cause. There were 35 of us that first year. And um, I wear a dog tag and I carry a picture of the reason I walk. And what I want to say to you right now is thank you because over the years um, since then we have We've made a difference. We've helped bring awareness uh, to mental illness. Mental illness is more than the worst of its outcomes. Um, the stigma attached to say, I have depression, I have bipolar, I have schizophrenia, I have a whole lot of things, keeps us from, from getting help. And so this walk is about raising the awareness of a broad spectrum of, of mental illnesses and saying, you know, it's, it's okay not to be okay. And, and we support each other as a community, and maybe we get help if we need it because we're not afraid to ask. So some of you have been with me and my family since 2012, and I just want to thank you. Um, I'm very happy to hand the reins over to community services um, and I really hope that you continue to, to support them. Um, mental illness is uh, it's pernicious. It, it can have tragic outcomes. So please advocate for those you know and love. Advocate for yourself. And we walk down in memory of too many people in this community. Thanks. Because without them, this Defeat Depression event would not have been possible. Uh, our national sponsors are Valley, Lundbeck, Pfizer, Innovative Medicines of Canada, the Mental Health Commission of Canada, DepressionHurts.ca and Webs9. And we have three key sponsors in uh, our direct area. It's the District of Kent, the Village of Harrison, Hot Springs and Prime Science in Chile. And a very spe special thank you to the local companies and businesses and organizations who have donated to this event. And that is Agassiz Center of Education, Agassiz Library Society, Friends of the Library, Agassiz Harrison Printers and Stationers, Agassiz Produce, Christopher's Water, Coles the Book People in Chilliwack, Hot Springs Liquor Store, Meadow Valley Meat in Chilliwack, Muddy Waters Café, Harrison Hot Springs, Old Setter Liquor, Liquor Store in Harrison Hot Springs, Pizza Hut in Agassiz, Remedy RX Pharmacy in Agassiz, Super Value in Agassiz, and the Superstore in Chile. We sincerely appreciate all your support and participation in today's event, as well as all your help to fundraise within this campaign. I also would like to share that we have received a very generous donation in the amount of $20,000 from a donor. Who wishes to remain anonymous and saying only that depression weighs heavy on all of us. And we extend, of course, a heartfelt thank you. Yeah. Um, over a few weeks, the total amount of this fundraising campaign will be announced via social media and the local newspaper, because we don't know what the end result will be today. So before we start with the yoga warm-up, I must mention a few housekeeping items. Uh, we have the washrooms uh, located in the front of the entrance and uh, in front of the hall, and on the lower level, under the outdoor exercise equipment at the beach, we have placed recycle and waste bins um, around the roots and we ask you to please to use them. Root maps with, a, uh, with an event agenda are at the registration desk. 
you can walk one of the three routes or as many as you would like, of course. Before you participate in today's walk, please ensure you have signed the waiver form at the registration desk first. Where routes cross any traffic areas, please follow the directions of the traffic marshals. Our volunteers are wearing a volunteer ID tag. If you have any questions or require first aid, please talk to one of them. There will be a fundraising barbecue starting at 12.15, back here at the Memorial Hall, and the cost is $3 for either a burger, a veggie burger, or a hot dog plus a drink. And all the proceeds will go to this event. The students of ACE will be our barbecue chefs today and have prepared their special barbecue sauce. Please share your experience today on social media using the information page you will find at the registration table and inside your backpack. Um, there is an I Spy game for the children to do while on the walk, so please pick up at the registration desk as well your forms. And before you leave, make sure that you pick up a bottle of water and some fresh fruit. Um, I would like to say a big thank you to the Defeat Depression Walk Steering Committee, who have worked very hard to get this event organized. And many thanks for all the volunteers involved today. This event would not have happened without your active participation. So thank you so much and please give them a warm applause. Thank <laughs> you. 